There is this short address, which, he, which is here, goo.gl slash free rurx7. And it will get you to the page. And then second question is how many of you already have the, uh, the Kepler Docker? Okay, this Kepler Docker is very minimalistic environment. So all you have there is a Kepler itself. Uh, there is a mm, very basic uh, window manager. And the only thing you can run is with the right click and you can choose Kepler and that's it. You can, that's pretty much all you can do in this Docker installation. But the assumption, uh, I mean the, um, the reason to have it is uh, to have a very simple environment that everybody can use without any installations of any uh, other uh, software. If you will see this window, you can choose no and you can uh, choose that do not show during the startup. This will show probably at everybody's uh, screen because you have a very fresh installation of Kepler. You run it for the first time on this, uh, this machines. It might be that for some reason, I mean, I tried every, each and every machine uh, like two days ago, but if you have any issues, just pick another card. I will not go through all the content in tutorial because this, uh, all the description in tutorial is meant for you to follow this tutorial when you will be uh, alone together with Kepler and nobody else to help you. So if you will go over the tutorial, the steps should tell you how to proceed to do everything. As I said, uh, as I said uh, before, we have a few uh, steps. First of all, installing Kepler. In our case, running Kepler in, uh, Kepler in Docker based installation. This is okay. We are happy to go because everybody has the installation. Then we will go with executing very simple workflows like hello world, I will tell you how to manage the components, how to connect them, how, how to run the workflow. Then we will go over these relations, which allows you to connect different components and to stream data in a different place. Then we will go and, and I will show you how to express a very simple um, um, constructs in the uh, programming languages, like, like for example, if else loops or uh, for do y loops. And uh, then we will also work with the Python scripts uh, if we will manage. But to be honest, I don't think we will get that far. There is not that much time. Okay, so first of all, you can always uh, download Kepler on your machine directly. So you don't have to use this Kepler base, uh, Docker based installation. You can always download Kepler by yourself. And you can always get the materials from this uh, link, which means that if you will like to have these materials on your personal computer for your personal exercises, you can always download them from here. And as I said, in Docker-based installation, all you can do is just right-click, choose Kepler, and run the workflow. That's it. And it will allow you to execute the workflow. Uh, in the section two, you have the list of all workflows which are provided in, the, in this uh, archive file. So if you will download this archive file, you have uh, the list of the workflows that we will cover today. But there are also additional workflows which you can investigate by yourself if you will, uh, if you will willing to. And we will start with the uh, uh, Hello World sample. Please note that some information here may be slightly misleading because the tutorial is prepared for the user-based installation. So if you install it on your computer. In here, you've already started work Kepler because you have the window, so you don't have to do this. And for each tutorial, you have always linked to the YouTube where you can see the video which demonstrates the building process of the workflow, which means that if you get lost in the middle of the process, you can always just go to the video and look how it is done, how you can uh, build particular uh, how, you ca how can you follow particular exercise? Okay, so let's start with this uh, first exercise, which is uh, building the Hello World uh, uh, sample. Okay. So first of all, please go to Kepler. And if you go over the... Uh, Okay, maybe let's start with something simpler. Let's start with opening the very basic workflow and this way you will 
get the uh, get the feeling how the workflows look like and how can we build them. So first of all, you can do something like this. You can choose file. You can then go open. Then you will inside your home directory. You will find the uh, directory which is called tutorial. So just please do something like this. File, open, then go to the home directory, which is here, this uh, home icon, and then go inside the directory, which is called tutorial. Inside this uh, uh, directory, we have uh, three directories, data, which are used by one of the workflows, output, which is used uh, to storing some information, and workflow, which contains different workflows, which we will work together today. And then go to workflow, basic, and choose hello world. And just I just press open uh, button. And you should see something like this. This is the workflow which you can, uh, which you have on the screen. And uh, as you can see, we are using here this uh, SDF director, which means that the execution of the actors will follow sequentially. Every actor which produce something, and the next actor will, will consume data. This, act, this workflow is very simple. As you can see, we have just a hello world, we have a display, and if we press the button here, play, it will just execute the workflow. And you can see that something is happening, and then we have information, hello world. You can put anything in here, for example, you can just I'm sorry, but I think the web, web uh, is uh, a little bit clumsy, and that's why there is a small lag. So you can just double click the actor in here. You can try it now. And if you will type in here any other information, and commit changes, you can see, first of all, that the value inside the work, uh, the actor itself has changed. And if you will execute the workflow, the value on the screen is also different, which means that the display actor performed different calculations because it had a slightly different input. So now we will do exactly the same thing, but I will uh, tell you how to perform these uh, steps which will build the workflow. So we will just go and try to build the whole workflow. So in, to do so, just choose File, Close, but do not choose Exit, because if you choose Exit, it will close the whole Kepler. If you choose Close, it will just close the workflow which you, are oper uh, which you are working with. You can discard changes, you can save changes, it depends on you and your preferences. And now, if you want to start a very simple workflow from the scratch, what you can do is just choose File, then you choose New Workflow, and you choose blank, which is just empty. It will open another window. Of course, you don't have to do this if you have a already empty window, but if you work with a different workflow, it's good to know that you can always choose file, new, and blank, and it will create something like this. And then we will try, this is something that you have already seen on the presentation. If you type in here, in the search component, the name of the actor and press search, you will see all the elements which are somehow connected to SDF. It means that this SDF is either in the name of the actor or in the documentation, or it can be buried somehow. It's somehow related to this, uh, to this actor. So if you create your own actors and you want to um, uh, add documentation and somehow group these actors, you can use so-called ontologies, which group the actors. Now let's take a look here. I will just cle clear this one. If I will go here and go with directors, you see all the directors are combined in a single place which is called core directors. However, each time you can always type in something in here. Then you just click the uh, director on the left and you drag the element on the screen like this. And there is one thing that is very important for the SDF director. If you right click this director and choose configure, each actor can be configured and you can always right click on the actor and choose configure 
whatever in here is. It will be either configure actor or configure director. Then you will see parameters for this, uh, mm, for this actor. And the important thing is that you can put always, you can, you can run this uh, director as many times as you like because you can always spec specify the given number of uh, executions, which means that you can run the same workflow you, you just press play once, but then the workflow is executed multiple times. It might be that your workflow will do something with the input data or output data, for example, input output files, and you want to process them in a loop. And instead of writing the loop, you can always use the SDF director. Uh, okay, now you, we will use element which is called string constant. This is the this element allows you to uh, output any string-based uh, uh, information, which means that you can pass any string to any other actor. You have always another actor, which is called constant, and this actor is slightly different. It also produces constant values. However, it allows you to produce any value of any type. So you can produce strings, booleans, doubles, uh, whatever you want to produce here. Okay. Then we want uh, to put something on the screen that will display this uh, uh, message, which we will put in the box, okay, like this. Display actors allows you to display on the screen anything it consumes. So it, it's useful for showing some information. Like for example, you are running the workflow and you have uh, lots of things happening and you want to uh, know where you are in the workflow. What was already, it's, it's like printf in, in, uh, in programming, more or less, or logging or whatever. In addition to that, you have uh, another actor which is called multiple tab display. It's slightly different and I will show you why. Um, and we will connect this, these two actors with the data. So, we have more or less everything in place. So we have something that will produce data. We have two elements which will consume data. And now we want to type in something that will be produced. So we just double click on the string constant and type in the message, hello. And um, as you probably remember, there was this, this element called relation. It's here on top. If we click this element, you will see a small diamond on the screen. You can move it like any other element. And the difference is between this element and actors, uh, the difference between this element and actors is that it will transparently pass the data. So what it gets, it just transfer out to all the outputs it is connected to. So if we will connect this actor with the diamond and these two like here and this one, Do not connect to the trigger uh, component. Trigger is a special element. Some actors have this element, which means that the actor itself can consume input data, but it will not fire as long as something is happening on the trigger, which means that you can control execution in addition to what you pass to the actor. Because you, it might be that you, for example, don't want to uh, run particular actor in a given uh, step of loop. Then you just pass the data to the actor, but you don't trigger it and it will not consume the data. And if we play, you can see that we have uh, two displays. And this is this, dif this is this difference between the uh, display actor and uh, multiple tab display actor. As you can see, display actor just have a display. Multiple tab display have the special tab, and each time you produce data, you can say where my output should be go, uh, would, should be visible. And this way you can, in the workflow, for example, part of the elements, I mean, part of the composite actors can produce data in, in one tab, another uh, part of the workflow can produce data in a different tab. If I will just do something like this, take a look here, I will just make a quick change to this workflow. Okay. Bye. 
and type here something else, like, for example, another display. And I will execute the same workflow. You can see that both messages went to different, oh, just to make it more clear. To different tab. This is uh, very useful in case you want to separate the, uh, the messages from different parts of workflow because sometimes you don't want to pollute this whole display with the single uh, very long log. You just want to uh, somehow categorize the, the messages and then just check what is happening in the, in the workflow. Yep, okay, so let's go further. So we can just choose file, close, Okay. Okay, and let's go to the workflow which is called Relations, Paths, and Synchronization. It's an exercise 2.2. And we will try to manipulate some data now. So we will try to do some exercise with the uh, with some data flowing on the, uh, through the workflow, and we will try to use this data. And we will use a few more components which you can, uh, which you can see. Uh, we will use uh, parameters which, are, which can be treated as uh, variables in an application. We will use values of these uh, parameters in here, and then we will uh, combine these values in an expression and produce the output. This is just to show you how you can manipulate data in the, in the workflow. If you want to follow uh, what I do on the screen, then you just follow on the screen. If somebody gets lost, then just go uh, with, the, uh, with the instructions here. So this time, let's use uh, TDF director, and we will put it here. And then we will use, uh, first of all, we will need these parameters. So take a look here. Well, you have few different uh, options here. First of all, you can have something like a file parameter, which means that you will, you have to specify the, the file. I mean, it's, it's used for uh, keeping files. Then you have a parameter with this blue dot, which is just a general, uh, I think, well, okay, it's a general parameter. It can hold different data. So it can hold uh, integers, doubles, strings, but you have to quote them. Okay, so now let's uh, um, customize the name of this uh, parameter. We'll just change the name to, let's say, AA. You can give any other name. You don't have to follow exactly the same thing as I'm doing on the screen. Uh, then we will... Um, create the parameter B, and we can assign some values here, like one, two, okay, here we go. And then, as you, as you have seen on, this is something I also want to show you. Um, this dynamic data flow, uh, behavior, I mean this workflow, is designed such way, I mean the, the execution model is designed such way that it will execute as long as there is anything to be consumed in the workflow. So as long as something produces data, it will work. If you want to make sure that your workflow will execute, for example, just once, you can do always something like this. You can go to the actor, you can right click the actor, and choose something which is called configure actor. And then in the firing count limit, you can specify how many times actor will fire. For now, I will type in here one. You can later on play with any other values and you will see what will happen. Then we need the relation in here. As you remember, we want first of all to show these two values.
so I just type in the name of the value and I will, I mean the, the, the name of the parameter and I will get the, name, uh, the value, which is here. <coughs> then I will do something like this. Okay, here and in here. And we want to show this value on the screen. So we will just pass this data to multiple tab display actor. And uh, the next, oh, just a second, here I want to have P. And then what the next step we want to do is to actually add this to data, uh, these two values. So I will use something which is called expression. Expression actor is uh, the special actor which allows you to use expressions and you can just type them explicitly. So it means that you can just type in what you want to achieve. But as you can see at the very uh, beginning there is nothing on the input. So we have to add something which will allow us to uh, to get this data. So to add uh, input ports, we have to right click on the actor and we have to choose something which is called configure ports. If you click this uh, menu option, you can see that at the very beginning there is only one output port in here. If we press add, it will uh, add a new place to type in here and I can type in here the name of the port and then I can refer to the name of the port, which will mean take the value from the port which, is, which has this given name and use this value. So let's say I will uh, type in input A and then I will type in input B. So we have input underscore A, input underscore B and both are input ports. I commit the changes and as you can see we have these ports here and we can now connect them with the relation in here. And now the, the way the workflow will behave will be like this. In here we can, of course, instead of uh, one as in the sample, we can export uh, Boolean value. It will go like this. This constant value will uh, trigger the execution of the whole workflow because it will fire the value true. This value will go to actor A and actor sorry, actor constant two and constant three, and they will produce respectively values A and values B, which are stored, stored in parameters here. And then inside expression, we will type in something like input underscore A plus input underscore B. And we want this, result to be shown in here. Let's go here and like this. Okay, I think everything is pretty much set. We can now play the workflow and you can see one, two, three, and that's, yeah, hooray, we did it. We added two variables. So, but there are a few important things that you have to pay attention to. First of all, we used something which is defined in here, which of course gives you already the impression that you can parameterize anything in the workflow because you can use these parameters. If I will put here something like string parameter and I will just type in here a message and then I will put the value here in the message and then instead of uh, using this constant here I will use something like this. Let's go, okay. And I will use message from um, like this. 
it should work. See, instead of typing directly the messages, I can just customize them in the parameters. And of course, you can put anything there, like a JSON file. You can put the, the content of JSON file directly in the workflow, or uh, some parameters for your shell uh, command, or whatever you want to use and par you want to parameterize, you can always put in the parameters. And the behavior of parameters is as uh, expected in any other language. So if you define the parameter in the main workflow, then uh, the parameter defined uh, in the composite actor will shade this parameter from the top and you can just redefine the, the, the names of the variables, which means that you don't run into conflicts with the naming. Of course, if, if this is your intention. Otherwise, you have to pay attention how you give the name to the, uh, to the name of the parameter. Okay, so everybody is happy with this one. Everybody followed and can see the result. How many of you followed and seen the result? Hands up. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Okay, so let's go. Okay, so I guess this will be the last thing that we will cover today because it's just 10 minutes till six. Okay, so I will cover one more sample which will show you how to use if else constructs in the, in the workflow and how to pass the, pass the data to the different, uh, mm, different, piece, different parts of the workflow. Um, the exercise number is 2.2.2, building if else from the scratch. So if you get lost during the process, you can always uh, take a look there. So first of all, I will go with the file, new workflow, and I will open the workflow, empty workflow. <coughs> Just a brief look whether we will, okay, so we will use integer values as well. Okay, so first of all, we will need this DTF actor. Uh, DDF director, sorry. And then we will need something that will be shown on the screen. So let's go here. Let's go here. We will get the string constant. And then we will just Type in any message you like. Depends on you. Okay. Then we, again, we will need the parameters which will be used in, a, uh, in the workflow. Like we have a, one parameter, another one. We will just give them names. Again, it can be X and Y instead of uh, A and B, it doesn't matter. The name is your arbitrary choice. Just please do not use spaces in the names of the parameters because it will be, uh, it's not a good idea. Okay, so we have uh, X, Y, uh, which are, and hello message which disappeared because I haven't pressed commit. If you close the, the parameter, if you configure actor and you don't press commit, you just close the window, you will lose your changes. So make sure to press uh, the commit. And then we have, um, okay. something which is called Boolean switch actor. Uh, as you remember, I told you that Typically, all the actors are these green boxes with uh, some icons. But for example, Boolean switch actor has this customized icon which tries to show you that something is splitting. But this is the same actor as anything else. It's exactly the same actor as any other actor. It just has a different uh, look and feel. Okay, and then uh, let's just add here to displays and uh, we have to change the execution uh, from none to one because we want to run the workflow only once 
And as you remember, uh, string constant produces the values all the time, and DDF works as long as data are present, so it will just go uh, into infinity. And then we want to have uh, constant actor which will also fire only once and it will make a comparison between A and B. Oh, sorry. No. Okay, and now the behavior of Boolean switch actor is like this. On the control port, port which is here, you tell uh, what is the condition to execute. I mean, it must be a, either true or false. And then depending on the value uh, in here on the control port, the value from the input will be passed either to true output or to false output. And in, oh, sorry, in our case it's even worse because it must be x, y. Okay, and now if we execute the workflow, just a second, just a second. This is exactly what happened. We didn't connect it to the expression actor with the input with the trigger, and it just constantly produced the data. So we have to make a small change, like this. Oh. Now it should be better. No, still something produces data, just a second. See, okay, one commit. Okay, so now you can see the data was displayed on the display too, which means the data went here. And this is more or less what we expect because X is less than uh, Y, which means that the condition here is false, which means that the value false comes here to the uh, control port, port, and the value from the input is going this, uh, uh, with this lower branch. If we will change the value here to free, the condition here will be true, and the value should go here. And that's what we expect. The display is triggered instead, which means that the value went to the top branch. Okay, so that's, uh, I think that for now we will finish with the tutorial, but you can follow the tutorial by yourself. What I want to show you now is the Indigo application. <coughs> that's something what I uh, discussed in the very beginning because we are running out of time. So I will just open the workflow here. It's already in the Docker installation. If you go to home directory and you choose the of open Ophidia Climate uh, Docker workflow, you will see the workflow which is used for running uh, Ophidia case via future gateway. But the difference here is that we are not triggering the future gateway directly via a command line or uh, by programming by ourselves API calls, but we use blocks in Kepler which do this for us. So we have a few blocks which perform actions which were discussed yesterday. As you probably, probably remember uh, yesterday's uh, talk from uh, Ricardo, he was saying that the API allows you to create tasks, upload files, uh, 
get the outputs of the execution, download files, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And for each call to API, which is available in the future gateway, you have a special dedicated actor and Java and uh, underlying Java layer. Because Indigo Kepler is based on the Indigo client module, so if you want to develop something by yourself based on Java, you can just get the Indigo client and you can build on top of this something that you want to uh, have. However, if you run with the Kepler, you have all these uh, elements in here and I will just briefly describe them. So for example, we have a uh, we have element which is uh, called create task and this element will create a new task in uh, future gateway. This task of course requires some information like application ID, like uh, description of the task, arguments of the task, uh, the names of the files that will be created, um, and the description of what is, what is actually happening. And this is exactly the same thing as in the Future Gateway API. So we don't do anything nasty here. We just transparently call the, the Future Gateway. Then we have special actor which is called Upload Files. We just provide a list of files, which are the local files installed on the Kepler, and we upload them to the created task, which means that as, long, as soon as all the files are uploaded, the task will be executed. Then we have something which is called <laughs> Check status. Check status is a so-called composite actor. This is something that I've already told you in a, in a talk. If we open this actor, you can see that inside we have a loop, which is uh, constantly calling a get task actor, which will try to get the current uh, uh, status of the task. And if this task, uh, I mean, if the status is done, we just uh, we just go out from the loop. And this loop is exactly the same as in the tutorial. So if you will go over the tutorial later on, then you can just take a look how it is done in here. So, okay, let's close this one. Then we have next actor, which is uh, get outputs. It just reads the outputs, which are created by the task. Then we, uh, sorry, but for now we just have outputs. We don't have, uh, these files are not physically uh, downloaded. We just get the list of files which were produced by the, by the task, then we download files, convert them to image, and then we display them on the image. And if we run this workflow, and we'll have like a three minutes of waiting, we should get the result. And everything which will happen here is actually done on the Ophidia server. But these are, these are the statuses of the job as seen by the future gateway, because the future gateway submits the job. Uh, it, the job is submitted, then it will be waiting, running, done, whatever the statuses will be. Sometimes we may jump over the statuses because we just make the check like uh, every 10 seconds or every five seconds. And sometimes it may happen that uh, the job actually will just finish sooner than uh, the statuses are uh, done. And you have to remember that this use case combines also Ophidia in here because we have a future gateway which is running on the Ophidia client, submits the job to the Ophidia server, which performs calculations, which means it calculates everything, and then Ophidia server returns data to the client. The client tells the future gateway, okay, I'm done, you can get anything I have. Future gateway downloads the information back, then we query future gateway, do you have any outputs for us? If it has, then we download them and we present the, the output to the user. So from the top, it looks like uh, just a few blocks. In fact, it's a very complicated use case because we apply like uh, four completely separate components. If we count the Docker itself as a next component, then we have yet another component in here. And as we discussed with um, uh, Krzysiek and Konrad already, it's fairly possible and fairly easy to access data also from the open data. And we could easily uh, attach this data in here. Job is done. Yeah, job is done. We should wait like uh, just a few more seconds and we should get the image from the, uh, we have the outputs of the job which are here, and then we get the image which is displayed by the, uh, by the Ophidia. I mean, which is produced by the Ophidia. Now, there is one thing I think I forgot to mention. If you go here <clears throat> on the YouTube, but I think that you also mentioned this one, yes? 
I think you've mentioned this uh, YouTube page where you can find all these uh, cases. Because if you go here, you will see the same case which is run separately in a, I mean, you will have the, the comparison of executing from Kepler and executing directly from the Ophidia uh, client framework, exactly. So you can go there, you can see the, the movie running live. Yeah.